Welcome to another Mr. Matt and Mr. J educational video. In this video there is one core component that I want to tell you about. It's called the floor selector and it's my favourite lift subject. It's the controller's ability to know where the lift is without using circuit boards and memory. Each manufacturer created their own design. Let's see how this Express Lifts from the UK did this. This is a very rare and probably now extinct DMR controller. Not many people know how this works. I've got an idea but no time to explain in this video. The standard Express Lifts design was a rotating cam selector. In the shaft are vanes. A device on the car roof reads them. And when it does, it rotates the cam. Each cam position activates a floor switch. What about Schindler? The lift car is attached to a cable which turns a drum. On the other side is a wheel with floor switches on the inside which activate relays on the controller. On the outside of the wheel are slow down and stop switches mounted on rollers which activate when they reach a ramp representing the floor. Here are some easy to understand selectors. The carriage represents the lift car, pushes switches in the middle of the device to select the floor where the lift is. Here is another one. It's the same type of thing, but this one uses standard micro switches. This Westinghouse has a different approach. It's a bit like an express design. In the background you can see two vertical bars, one for each lift. At the top of each bar is a small motor. When the bar rotates, a small platform travels up and down a thread. Like a nut and bolt. If you hold the nut and spin the bolt, then the nut goes up and down the thread. The lift car travels the motor each time a floor is passed. The small platform presses switches along its travels to select the floor where the lift is at. An even older type of selector is this one made by Westinghouse. It's exactly the same principle as a previous selector. A motor or even the lift turns the bar. But this platform is massive and the copper contacts are at the back. And it goes on. See Elevator Bob's website to see other types of selector. The main reason for this video is for me to talk about my favourite selector. It's made by Otis and still around today if you know where to look. A big rotating spindle with copper discs on it. Each plate represents a floor. And the platform represents the lift position in the shaft. When the lift finds a call, this causes the platform to drop. As each contact touches the copper disc in the middle, the lift is slowed down until the last contact stops the lift level with the floor. The motors are run by DC, direct current, rather than an alternating current. A DC current enables the lift to run faster and smoother. But to get the DC current in the first place, each lift has a small generator, which is essentially an AC motor at one end which turns a DC generator at the other end. These generators have to run when the lift is moving and is costly with electricity. It was popular until about the 1980s. There is one more part to this, the carriage at the back. This travels up and down with the platform and performs several tasks. It tells the lift which direction to go to get a call. It also tells the lift when to stop for a call and starts the slowdown sequence. And 
it activates the floor displays. This is a different building and it doesn't have the DC generators or the spinning discs. It runs on a standard three phase main supply. The ride is noticeably more abrupt as the carriage can only switch between fast, slow and stop. Because it runs on just two speeds, only the carriage is necessary and the spinning discs are not required. When it moves, it opens switches like this one. This is a direction switch. And here we have a row of contacts and brushes. When they touch, a circuit is made. Here, if I slow down the video, you can actually see a small spark as electricity starts to travel between the brush and the contact when they touch. But this is not good enough. Do you know what a brush and a contact is? Yes, I'm talking electricity here, not cleaning. In fact, I'm going to dedicate my next video to explaining how this works. And I've spent ages doing detailed animations. Here it is. This diagram has much less detail on it compared with the real carriage shown on the left. But this makes it easier to explain. Join me on the next video and I'll explain in simple terms how this works, even if you know nothing about circuits.